Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Today I want to talk about stamina as I've been receiving a lot of emails lately about how to develop stamina. I will say this to start off the video, you should first focus on reducing tension in your playing and I have many videos across this channel about reducing tension because if you're playing the wrong way, uh, you're going to build up tension quicker which is going to fatigue you faster. But once you have applied all of those techniques, there are certain pieces that are going to just make you tired by the end of it. It's not like you're going to have pain, like bad pain. It's, you'll just be pretty tired. Like I was pretty tired after I played Rachmaninoff third piano concerto. Um, but pieces that are even more uh, physically demanding in my experience, this is just my personal experience, were things like the Liszt Hungarian Rhapsody number no. six, um, the Chopin uh, Opus 25 number 11 etude, uh, often referred to as the winter wind etude. I remember when I was first learning that, that was really hard to get through. Uh, your arm just, my arm would just be kind of like on fire. I'd just be, and it's not in a bad way. It's not like shooting pains or anything like that. It would just be from playing, you know, eight straight pages of that material. Your muscles are being used very, um, in an intense way. So, uh, I wanted to talk about how you can build up stamina today. Again, reduce the tension first because if you're playing the wrong way, it's pointless to do what I'm about to do because you could actually cause more injury. And this is a point that I want you all to be very careful about. Um, and I wanted to start off with a, kind of a funny story. Uh, the, the point I want you to be careful about is don't play through the pain. That's not a good thing. But you will notice a difference between bad pain and just general fatigue. I remember when I was really little, my grandma had me play back to back a bunch of hand and exercises. That's just fatigue. There was no shooting pains. There was no, you know, weird feeling in my wrist. It was just my arms were getting tired. You know, you could just feel yourself fatiguing. It's like running a very long distance. It's that type of fatigue. Whereas if you have knee pain and you're doing um, a certain type of exercise like lunges or something and there's a shooting pain in your knee, that's terrible. Whereas just running a long distance, if your body gets tired, that's fatigue. So I want you to kind of uh, distinguish that in your mind. Uh, the funny story that I wanted to start with is um, I played a uh, in a master class when I was about 14 years old. I can't remember who was giving the master class, but uh, he said, "You look." I played the list Hungarian Rhapsody number no. six and um, I didn't have all those nice reducing tension techniques that I have uh, on my channel now, like the up-down exercise or the 25-minute uh, octaves video that I have on this channel that can really help you with those octaves. I was still learning a lot of those techniques, and I hadn't yet um, discovered a lot of them. And um, the guy said, wow, you look kind of tired right now. I was like, oh, yeah, who wouldn't be tired after playing that piece? And he's like, well, if you play it the correct way, you shouldn't ever get tired. You should be able to play this for six hours straight without getting tired. And I told my teacher that and she's like, yeah, I'd like to see him try that. <laughs> I thought that was pretty great. And so while I understand that if you're playing the proper way, you're going to fatigue the slowest, I do think there is something to be said about just playing very taxing material that you can get tired. So how do we go about that? If I was playing, I'm gonna demonstrate with Winter Wind uh, Etude. Um, if I was working on stamina in that, I might start with this part. That, or sorry, it starts up here. Got a little off there. I haven't played this for a couple of years, actually. start here and I would go all the way to the end and then I would probably just do this next line okay and you can build two different ways you can just never end ne do a never-ending building um, of just adding one or two extra lines and then going to the end you're going to get pretty tired pretty quickly. And I don't think you have to go through the entire piece every single day like that. But I would do perhaps 
maybe that most of that last page and then most of the second to last page and every edition is going to be a little different where the pages line up so i'm just giving you general guidance so i might start but i would start at logical sections i don't think that you need to start like i'm going to start in this one you know just on a random one i would start at the beginning section um, and then I might do these two lines and then you can put those together and then maybe you put that you know four uh, line chunk together with the next four lines and I like working from the end so that you always know that you're finishing if you work from the beginning and you start getting so tired it's kind of like you have uh, no more options you're like well I just got to keep pressing whereas if you always start from the end you know that you finish the piece. So you know at what point the piece starts to break down if you get too tired. So let's say that you're working backwards um, in those four line chunks, you'll get the four lines really good. This is a great way to practice anyway, by the way, is just, I like to work like maybe one or two bars at a time and build out to these, you know, one or two or four line chunks. Um, that's just a great way to learn material, but this is also great for stamina. So. I would maybe do the last page, the second to last page, try putting those together, or you could do four lines, four lines, put those together, and you just keep building that way. And maybe, so let's just, let's just say that we have four buckets of four lines, okay? So we have the last four lines of the piece, the second to last four lines of the piece, and so forth. And let's say that you just can't do that, okay? So you get to the fourth one and you're already too tired. You're like, oh gosh, I'm never gonna get through all the eight pages of that. How would you go about that? Well. Let's say this is bucket one. Bucket one is fourth to last four lines of the piece. So like 16 lines from the end of the piece. And then this is the last from the last 12 lines of the piece and then the last eight lines and then the last four lines. I hope that makes sense how I'm doing this. Just think of four different buckets. So rather than just saying, okay, I'm gonna do bucket four, three, and then together, and then two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, I'm gonna start with one after I do all those, I'm gonna go one to two. So I'm gonna do the last 16 lines to line um, 12, that's my first bucket. And then li line 12 to line eight from the end, okay? And then I would put those together. And then you have to make a judgment call. Do you then put bucket three in there? Do you do the 16th line from the end to the fourth line from the end? Or do you go from the 12th line from the end to the fourth line from the end? Do you do that little bucket by itself? Or do you wanna get fancier and split the bucket in half and do line 10 to the end of the piece or even line eight to the end of the piece then build back to line 10? You have to make the judgment call and it's gonna be different on every one of these, but this is how you build stamina effectively is you start building bigger and bigger sections very gradually. And I would add this extra tip in there when you're starting to get tired, don't just keep pushing, pushing, pushing in a fast tempo. Slow down, reassess, can I get rid of any additional tension? I would say about 99% of you watching this, the answer would be yes. Um, I think for me, the answer is 100% of the time, yes, I can get more rid of more tension. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be getting too tired. When I start to get to the eight page mark, you know, as you start to get eight full pages, even if you have no tension, you might still get a little bit on the tired side. So that's my main advice is to slow things down when you're starting to fatigue a lot, maybe just take a break or slow things down. That's a great way to reinforce accuracy and perfection and um, with your dynamics. How's my voicing sounding? How's the rubato, et cetera. So uh, I want you to go through all of those points, but I want you to be patient with this as well. Okay? Building up stamina with a piece is not something that you do in one day. Sometimes it takes weeks or months to build up the proper stamina to play a piece really effectively. I'm not saying that I had to spend months to be able to play through Winter Wind effectively after I learned it. I could play through it, but I got less and less tired. Now when I play it, I feel about when I get to here. That's like Chopin's little saving grace. For any of you who've played this, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's nice right there because it just gives you this little tiny break or even these little guys. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the um, part, the, the part right before that, um, this part. 
you just get that little break, that little respite right there, and then you go on to the next line. Uh, you'll get to about that part and that will be like a nice little break and then you're like, okay, I can make it to the end. I'm still a little bit tired, but I'm not so exhausted that I couldn't then go and play this because very often I'll do like a little set of etudes on a concert and I always loved Daniel Trifonov's performance at the um, Rubenstein competition, how he got done with this. And then it was like, yeah. It, his etudes are quite remarkable. They sound so much just like a set of works rather than a bunch of individual pieces. And I, I love that. And so you have to be prepared to then play the Ocean Etude or the Opus 25, number 12. But again, stamina can be worked up once you get the Winter Wind Etude really well and then you go into the ocean. By the way, I know those are not nicknames Chopin gave them, but I just use them for simplicity uh, reasons then you work up maybe you do half of the winter wind the second half of winter wind and then the second half of ocean so you can use these same principles to get through a program not just a piece having said that i want to give you I, I know i'm rambling a lot but i all these ideas are coming to me as i'm recording this i want to give you the a piece of advice that my teacher recently gave me it was uh it was in December of last year, so about five months ago, six months ago, and I was doing a program in January um, up in Ogden, Utah, uh, this really cool theater, the Egyptian theater, and it went pretty well um, given the circumstances. I've never been that deathly sick. I'm pretty sure I may have had coronavirus at that point. It was before it was, uh, it was a sickness unlike anything I've ever experienced, <laughs> and um, I was about to, you know, um, pass out right before I went on stage. Somehow I managed to get through it. But um, I I said, I'm going to do this big piece and this big piece and this big piece and this big piece. And she's like, and I just had a, a, a student email me not too long ago with a question just like this. Um, and she's like, okay, Josh, those are amazing pieces and you're playing them all really well, but that's too taxing on your audience um, unless they're a very sophisticated audience. She's like, if you're playing Carnegie Hall, um, with classical concert goers, that would be fine. But for a local concert, and it's not that local people aren't sophisticated, it, there was a lot of sophisticated people in that audience, but there is something to be said about the flow of a program, and this can also play into the whole stamina thing. If you play a giant set of works like the four B Chopin ballades, you better break that up afterwards or beforehand if you're playing them as a set with maybe some short preludes or mazurkas if you're staying in Chopin's realm or a couple of etudes or a nocturne. That really helps the stamina of the audience's attention as well. It will also help your physical stamina. So just a little bonus tip at the end of this video. I hope this answers your questions about stamina. That's how I personally build up stamina through my sections. Remember, it's simple to understand. It's not always easy. You have to be patient with this, but I know you can do it. If any of you have any questions, please let me know. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.